I'm Jacob, I'm Yuri. and we're going for a drive. 2019 Subaru Ascent. Limited with eyesight. So with eyesight doesn't really mean anything. Well, it kind of means something, but it doesn't mean as much as it should. So this is a three row SUV, the first one from Subaru. Let's get into the horsepower and torque. 260 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque from a 2.4 liter turbo four-cylinder boxer engine. And what is connecting that to the driveline? A CVT. We usually don't like CVTs. We give you reasons, but we've got more reasons for this one. Okay, so this one, the whole drivetrain, I think the Crosstrek did this as well. Every time you floor it, there's like a second delay where there's still throttle being applied and it's really sketchy. Like when you let off. Yeah, so if I floor it right now and I let off, still accelerating, yeah. now it stops. Yeah, it makes me feel slightly uncomfortable and I think that's related to the CVT and how the power gets transferred. Yeah, and it's got a turbo too, so it's probably still building a little bit of boost. It's just, it's a little odd. You can get used to it, I just don't like it. But as for speed and power, it's like dad fast. Yeah, it's completely adequate. It feels pretty close to the Mazda CX-9, but a little bit slower than the Honda Pilot. From what I've gathered so far, this is kind of just a three row SUV legacy. Well, yeah, it's a Subaru. But on all the CVT bashing, has there been a CVT we've liked? The Honda Accord has been the most tolerable CVT I can remember. Okay, I feel like there's another one that we didn't mind, but I, I can't really remember. There's electric cars with like e-CVTs and stuff. Those are fine. Okay. They're very weird, but a little bit less weird than regular CVTs with gas engines. Continuously variable transmission. Yeah, so basically what that means is there's no gears, there's no real gears. This does have paddles and it simulates fake gears. So if I use them, downshift, downshift, responds relatively quickly, but not the fastest. It's completely adequate for daily driving. Just don't get excited for sending it into cliche corner as I'm about to do. And there's obviously a ton of body roll from this massive behemoth of an SUV. It feels big. It does feel big. But when you drive it outside of Cliché Corner and like daily driving, it doesn't feel that big. No, it's it's very gentle ride, easy to steer. Yeah, and on that steering note, it actually has such light steering, like ridiculously light. Not as light as the Mitsubishi p have that we recently drove as well. So since it's a three row SUV, we should probably start with checking if we can fit in the back seat. Yes, we should. So I fit behind myself, sitting behind myself pretty okay. I fit behind myself in the second row, no problem. And if you want to sit in the back row, you need someone like my size in front of you. Yeah, I don't fit behind myself like at all if I'm sitting behind myself in the second row. The thing that I hated the most is that when you fold the middle seat back up, you need to slide it all the way back to click in before you can adjust it forward. So you need to crush someone's knees first before you can relieve their knees. Yes, exactly. And then we should probably also talk about the storage room and hit it with the box test. Box test. 17 boxes, pretty good. Get your own box on patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Uh-oh, uh-oh, 17. It was kind of scary how hard that trunk closes with pressure. Yeah, I feel like if you had little kid fingers near there, <laughs> it would chop them off. <laughs> do Maybe, something. I don't want to test it, but it does have a lot of pressure. It's shock shocking. Yes. Okay, visor test. All right, here we I, go. I think these do well, right? I Three, hope so. Three, two, one. Yes, good job. Oh, we have a logo, a slide logo. Oh yeah, oh, mine even says slot. Oh, okay, perfect. Right on, good job, Subaru. Then let's do the cup holder test. So we've got a medium cup of coffee today and it fits perfectly fine in the front cup holders and I'm sure a small would fit as well. I agree. Also insert 19 cup holder joke and back to the review. <laughs> and a little bit more drivetrain stuff since this is a Subaru, it does have all wheel drive, Subaru's legendary system. I'm sure it's completely fine for the winter, haven't been able to test it but today, no problem. And we've got X mode, which helps you out in sticky situations, like when you get stuck and like up a hill and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Not that you'll ever need to use it because you bought a three row SUV. <laughs> yeah, to transport all your children. Only when the kids are yelling at you and you get distracted and drive off road and get stuck, then you could save yourself. Yeah. That's it. Pretty much. When you're too stressed. Or also you can have five children or four children, depending on which configuration you get, because you can get this with captain's chairs. Oh, uh, I love captain chairs. They're pretty cool. But you know what, man? I'm still team minivan. I'm yeah, like, so am I. I don't care about this like three row SUV. It just seems like a hassle. Like anytime I need to get from the back door into the back row, it's like, well, uh, my opening's like this. And more driving stuff, the suspension is super soft. This is very comfortable to drive. Daily driving is fantastic with this. So let's talk about the eyesight since we're talking about the driving. Right, okay. It's kind of like lane keep 
but does it do much? It technically has lane keep assist on paper, but it is lane departure sort of assist. I know it's not departure assist, yeah. it's not helping you out of the lanes. It well, reels it, you back in. Yeah, but the thing is, if there's a line on one side of the road, like these country roads, if you if it leads you out, it just throws you into the ditch. It doesn't yeah. stop. I don't know. I think they make it too big of a deal for having two cameras up there. Yeah, and it does have adaptive cruise, and that's kind of the big deal thing. And it does work, and you do get a nice reticle showing you the car in front of you where it's sniping it. <laughs> what I really like is when you've got the display mode so you can see the Subaru in the middle of the gauge cluster. When you hit the brakes, the little Subaru shows the brakes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And adaptive cruise also works in stop and go traffic, which is what you want. So there's not much overall driving stuff. It drives completely fine. You'll have no issues driving this daily. Let's talk about the exterior and the interior. Get in depth with you in the driver's seat. First thing I noticed, getting in and out is very easy. The floors are like really low. There's nothing in the way. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's too high off the ground. It's super comfortable daily driving in and out. Opposite of the Tacoma and opposite of the Jaguar I-Pace. <laughs> yeah, completely opposite. <laughs> so this interior, it's pretty much the same as the Legacy, which is fine. I think it's a little nicer. It, well, it's got white stuff that kind of wraps around. It definitely is a little nicer. Yeah, it's got soft touch in a lot more places. I really do like this interior. And then we've got the same gauges, the same infotainment. So we've got our satellite radio rewinding. We've got Tune Mix, which is great. It all works. We also have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. And if you click our home button, you see how we've got those little like iPhone style pods? Yeah, yeah. Apple CarPlay style pods, Android Auto. It's going that way too. Yes, it is. Eventually. Like I said in our first video, it's still not the better it way. It looks prettier. And what I noticed weird about this one, every single Subaru controls this little top screen differently. Yes, they do. This one, okay, it added it up here. Yeah, and it's different buttons than the WRX did. Yeah. And the cross track was on the, on the steering wheel. wheel. And I think this is a solid way to do it. Yeah, this is way better. And we don't have piano black buttons on the steering wheel. No, which is so much better. Just like the cross track. Yeah. And then we've got a couple more buttons for like our lane keep up here. Yeah, way up here. So I think it's all attached to that Subaru eyesight system. So they're like, yeah, we're just gonna put the buttons right here. It's weird, the first time you look for it, you don't expect to look up here. And then we've got a cool minivan feature, the pop-out mirror to watch what's going on in the back. Yeah, and that works too. Obviously it's a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a bunch of gloss black on the center console. Not that much because down at the bottom where all the dust and everything would settle, it's all just regular matte, which it is looks, fantastic. It looks great. Yeah. And then our climate controls, all hard buttons, we've got a nice armrest so I could touch the steering wheel while driving. Yeah, and we got heated seats and a heated steering wheel. We don't have cooled seats, which you can get in the premier trim, which is the one trim above this one. And the cheapest thing that I noticed in this whole interior are these little covers for the aux port and the USBs. I feel like anyone that buys this car used, those, those are gonna be gone. But as a new car, it's kind of nice because BMW should probably get that so that their cup holders don't get filled with coffee. But all that tells me is those are probably not waterproof. Uh, yeah. Or, or maybe they cover them so they don't look unsightly. Maybe. Let us know. And how about these seats? Seats are pretty comfortable. They're more comfortable than the ones in the CX-9 for me. I would say they're equally comfortable, but your knee's not gonna hit this thing. Exactly, but they're less comfortable than the seats in the Honda Pilot. My my seat memory rating system isn't as good as I think. Okay, you mine's know, pretty good. Okay, so it's hard to remember. Yeah. Like, do you remember every chair you've sat in and no. how comfortable that chair has been? I remember being uncomfortable and I remember being comfortable. And then the ones in the between are kind of like this one. Okay, <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard rating system. It's not as easy as boxes and cups. No. And we've also got ratcheting headrests, which I really like. And my favorite feature of all time in this one, we have peasant blockers. They are manual in the second row. Oh, I like the big panoramic sunroof. That is super cool too. But it does not stretch all the way back like it did in the Pacifica where you get your own individual roof. It's because many vans are better. Let's talk about the outside of this. Do you like the overall look? Yeah, I think it looks kind of just like a big Forester. It does. It obviously has the Subaru design language. It works for this. I think it looks pretty decent. Yeah, if you like the look of Subarus, I think it matches perfectly. We do have the boomerang headlights, classic, yeah. AKA classic current Subaru. And if you like big SUVs, it definitely looks like a big SUV. It does, but it's not as like big and kind of menacing as like an Atlas. Yeah. So I think I like the Atlas look more than I like this look. I think my favorite part about the looks is how big the bottom part of the rear bumper is. Oh really, the it's black like, part? It's like two feet tall. I guess you can remove that so you can throw in a trailer hitch or something. Thing. I'm not sure if that's what it's for. And it's got a cool texture. Yeah, the texture is like my favorite part of the whole thing. Cause it's like the smallest little detail and it works really well. And how about those wheels? The wheels look pretty good. Again, they don't really stand out. They fit the car. And what is the Continental recommended tire? The Cross Contact LX Sport. And that's pretty much it with the looks. It's not spectacular or anything. It's just a mainly a big Subaru. Yeah, pretty much. So let's get to the price. $46,495. Canadian. 
This is the second from the top trim. The one trim above is just around 50 grand. So I guess now it's time to toss this in with all the other competitors of the three row SUV gang. So this compared to the CX-9. I think I like the CX-9 a lot more, but because of the seating position, I could not recommend that for myself. To me, they're the exact same. The okay. options are all the exact same. The lane keeps the same. The satellite radio stuff's the same. The Apple CarPlay is the same. Don't you feel like the Mazda CX-9 feels more luxurious than this? Yeah, I think a little bit more luxurious. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But feature-wise, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much. Like if you want that like Subaru all-wheel drive instead of the Mazda all-wheel drive. Yeah, and this does have more room inside as well. So how about this compared to the Atlas? I like this equally with the Atlas. This beats out the Atlas for me because the Atlas is missing all that like, rewinding satellite radio station stuff, and I don't like the lower infotainment. And what about this versus the Pilot? I think this wins too because I like the infotainment a lot more. I like the Pilot a lot more, and this is completely eliminated for me because of that CVT transmission, and I like the engine more in the 3.5 V6 Honda. Ah, oh, I forgot about the transmission because I've been driving slow. Yeah, but exactly. I guess, uh, okay. Yeah. But the, and the Honda's got good lane keep. It does. Now that I remember about the CVT, <laughs> I've been driving slowly. It'll go Mazda, then Honda, then this. This is the only one with a CVT. Yeah, I would take this over an Atlas. This is equivalent for me. Okay, okay. Let's throw a weird one in there, the Durango. I'd go Durango. Yeah, so would I, but it's more expensive. Yeah, but it, it's so much cooler. It is cool. But not everybody is cool and not everybody needs to try to be cool. This does have all wheel drive, fits a lot of boxes, fits cups, has warmed seats, has a heated steering wheel. It's got kind of everything you want. It is a solid first attempt at a three row SUV. Yeah, the only thing that I think they need to do is get rid of that CVT finally, because every other manufacturer has pretty much got rid of them except nissan so let us know where the subaru ascent falls in your three row suv lineup don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell patreon.com slash the straight pipes join our youtube membership and teespring for cool merch yo cliche corner merch buys us prowlers and raptors yes it does i'm, I'm working on the prowl i swear <laughs> i'm yuri i'm jacob and we're going for a drive <laughs>